In this lecture, we're going to be talking about instance variables. Now, this is going to be one of the best ones because of the fact that instance variables are so powerful in Constra 2. Not to mention instance variables in general when it comes to like web development are also extremely powerful. So instance variables are always going to be the thing to know. So how do we do it? It's very, very simple. All we have to do is go to one of our objects. You can see here I have our player and I have our enemy. And you can see right here above our behaviors, we have a room for instance variables. Now, these are variables, and we actually have more types to add to these than we do in our global or local. We can actually add in a Boolean as well. Okay, so we have one more type. But still, it makes a big difference here because now we can add in a Boolean for important things. I don't want to do this in the player just yet. I want to go to our enemy. I want to add an instance variable to our enemy. I want to make it a Boolean, and I want to find out, is player nearby? That's what I want to know. And if that answer is true, then I will start to attack the player, very simply. Now, this is why this is my best example for this, because we already looked at, we already know how objects work. And if I copy this over and over again, this is going to be independent for each instance. And this is a very important concept to grasp. Anything I add into my instances or instance variables or to my behaviors and to my effects only affects the independent copy, not every single copy of them. And that's what's really important about this. So now that the initial copy has this variable of is player nearby initially set to false, now all of these copies do. And because of that, when I actually go and program that in, if I find out we're going to compare the Boolean of is player nearby, now that I have this once, it's going to affect for all of them, even though they're independent objects. And that's what's really important about this. I can write this line of code, and it's going to individually run for each enemy that is on the screen. So in this case, we have four enemies. Now, let's say this is nearby. So this would be true. This would be true. These guys are not nearby, so they would be false. Now, we're not going to add in any code to actually make them walk or make them go near us, but we would just compare the distance. And if the distance is less than 30 pixels or whatever, 50 pixels, then we're going to set that to true. Uh, and then that could spawn into creating a state engine and go from there. But that's the importance of having instance variables. Another case for instance variables would be something like player health. So I would do this player health and I'd have it equal 100 or something like that. Another instance case would be, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something, uh, player power up too. We could also do something like that. Um, there's just a whole lot of stuff you can do with instance variables and they're extremely powerful because again, it's only for that independent object. So that's really the big takeaway from instance variables. Hopefully that's starting to make sense. As you start to program more, as you start to figure this out more, as maybe you'll follow a tutorial of mine uh, on YouTube where you can see where we're making enemies move towards our player, you can see why we'd be triggering this, uh, then that would make even more sense to you. But I really just want to talk about this uh, conceptually. Now, without confusing you too much, we're going to take this a step further. So we have this instance variable is player nearby, and hopefully you get how that works. If not, I'm going to show you another example, but we're going to end up deleting this. So I'm going to call this enemy health, and this is going to equal 10. And now every single enemy has that instance variable. So I'm going to put this one to 25. So this is a way harder enemy. I'm going to put this one to 15, and we'll leave the other one at 10. So now you can see, hopefully a little bit better, a little bit clearer, how you can have these instance variables have different values. But you'll notice that what we're doing is we're really creating a base stat for our enemies in the future. Now, obviously, you're going to have multiple enemy types. So calling this object enemy really does us no good. What you're going to want to do is have different sprites with different animations for different enemies. Maybe you have a robot. Maybe you have a goblin. Maybe you have a dragon, something like that. And they're always going to need the same kind of instance variables. They're always going to need to know if the player is nearby. They're always going to need to know what their health is. So how can we make this even more modular for ourselves using instance variables? Now, again, if you have the free version of Construct 2, then you're going to have to use instance variables. So don't delete any of this. But if you have the personal version or greater, you can use what are called families, which is the same thing as saying inheritance. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new family here. We're going to put the enemy object in there and hit OK. We're going to call this enemies. And now you can look at our enemy object and you can see that they have no instance variables and they have no behaviors attached to them, which is what we want because we now put them in this family. And this family lets us add in instance variables, behaviors, and effects to it that anything in this family will now inherit, which is really, really awesome. So technically having an object enemy object itself is pretty pointless because that's what this family does. So what we're going to do for our family instance variable is we're going to add in our is player nearby boolean. And then we're going to also add in our enemy health number. We'll give it an initial value of 10. And then whatever else you can think of that you might need for your enemy. So for what we could do here, we could do something like enemy type which could be really cool. It could be something that you could play on. So the default type could be an archer. So now, now that we have added in our family instance variables, let's take a look at our, our object enemy here. You can see that they're actually grabbing these instance variables from that family. Now it should, uh, it kind of should show that it's using that family and maybe it's just not because they're the same instance variables. I'm not sure. But now we have those instance variables again. Let me double click. Let me make a new sprite. Let me make this 32 by 32. Let's pick a better color green. And let's call this our object goblin. Now, this is going to be really cool because say you have already programmed all this code for your enemy logic and now you want to add in a new enemy. Well, very easily you can just right click, edit the family and put the goblin in there and now that goblin should have inherited those instance variables just like that, which is pretty awesome. So sometimes it should tell you what family it belongs to. Maybe that's if you have multiple families going on. And since we don't, there's no need to tell me that. But now you can already tell that my goblin object, which is completely different from this object, has completely different well, it's inheriting the same variables that are common. And that's really what's important here. So now if I go to my family and I add in, maybe I have a eight direction, maybe I have a platform, maybe they behave differently. Now, if I look at my object enemy, you can see that now that's inheriting the eight direction and the platform behavior. So maybe the enemy object doesn't need the eight direction. So we'll just disable that, but maybe this guy does. So we'll disable the platform. So hopefully you can see how this is working and how families allow this level of inheritance. And it's really, it can really get complex, but it can also get really easy and you're basically setting up a foundation for yourself to make it easy on yourself so you can keep reiterating and make more enemy types and more and more and more and more to make your game more fun. So for example here, this is our goblin, but maybe it's our goblin archer, or maybe it's a goblin knight. And maybe by typing in knight right here, that'll now trigger in the code to have that act as a knight. And maybe the knight's health is 100. You know, because it's a knight class, maybe it's way stronger. It's a goblin knight, so it's even harder. So hopefully you can start to see where I'm coming from. Maybe this is an archer and it's really, really weak. So it only has five HP. And the only way you would set this is you would set this in your event, but now you have independent control over that. And using inheritance, you're able to just give it all these base stats. It's a great thing once you really fully grasp this. So that is instance variables in a nutshell. They are very, very, very powerful. Uh, and this is only scratching the surface because another thing that would come along with an instance variable is a state engine to control the player's animations and whatnot. And I, believe me, I've covered that so many times in free tutorials and other courses in the puzzle platformer and everything else. So if you're interested in that, you can go check that out. But let's continue going. So far, we're doing great. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.